What's up everyone, April Dunham here, and happy Template Tuesday. This week I'm going to share my Occupancy Tracker Power Apps template. This template allows you to display the current occupancy and max occupancy of a room and enable users to check in and check out. Some concepts you'll learn in this video is the HTML control, setting the display mode of buttons, utilizing components, creating customizable setting screens, and creating dynamic input questions. But first, here's the intro. The Occupancy Tracker template is designed to be used as a kiosk power app. This would be an app that you would have on display in front of a particular room or office that you want to allow check-in and check-out with. Since this is used as a kiosk app, there's a settings component to this particular template, which allows you to configure which rooms to show and adjust some settings for the app depending on where you have it running. To get started, you would click on the settings menu and go to Manage Rooms. So this is where you can control which rooms you want to allow check-in and check-out with. So right now I only have two loaded. I have a conference room. So I can click on the edit and I can see that I've set the max occupancy for a conference room to 10. And then we can adjust the current occupancy manually if we need to. And then we have the break room which has slightly larger max occupancy of 40. So when you would go set this up in a particular room, you would pin the room that you want to show. So let's pin the conference room, for example, and we'll go back. So now you see when we pin the conference room, this will be running on some kind of tablet or other interactive device so that people can see as they go to enter the room if it's safe to enter or if it's full and then how many people are in there. So as we can see right now, it's safe to enter. So I can go and check in. And as soon as I hit that maximum occupancy, it lets me know that it's full, I can't enter, and I have no option to check in anymore, I can only check out. There's some additional settings in the app for show check-in questions. So you can keep it simple like we just saw where you can just allow people to check in, check out, or you can enable the required check-in question setting. And you see we have a few questions preloaded into here and we can toggle these whether we want to show or hide or require these questions. So now that I have that setting enabled, if I go back to the app, and we'll just check out so that we have the option to check in. Now if I click the check in button, rather than automatically checking me in, it takes me here and it's identifying which one of those questions I selected to require. And now I have to fill these out. So if they're no, I can leave them as is and check in. But there's also some logic in the background that if I set any of these to yes, for example, it's not going to let me check in. It's going to give me a message that I'm not allowed to enter the room if, for example, I was experiencing a fever. Let's open this app in edit mode. Like all the templates that I'm showing on Template Tuesday, the data source is a SharePoint list. There's three separate SharePoint lists, one for room occupancy tracking, just a three column list where you can put in the name of the room, the max occupancy allowed, and then we keep track of the current occupancy within the Power App. The other is check-in questions. Those questions that we could choose to require or not require will be stored here. So you use the title field to hold the question name. There's a number field to choose whether the question should be active. And then there's a drop down that allows you to set the question type. So right now I have it configured where it accepts either yes, no, Boolean questions or fill in the blank single line of text questions. We're actually using this. So in that gallery, when we're requiring these questions from the user, we're dynamically setting in the input controls based off of the question type that we choose here when we're configuring this. In the last list is this check-in admins list, which just holds a given user's name in the title field and their email. This is used to show who can configure the settings of an application. This app is just five screens, so let's take a look at the landing screen first. The occupancy numbers and whether it's safe to enter is stored within an HTML control. If you're not familiar with the HTML control, you'll wanna check out my top three uses for the HTML control video, which I'll drop a link down here in the video notes. To add an HTML control, just go to insert, text, and HTML text. This gives you an object that you can put in HTML code. 
And with any HTML code that you can put in here, you can do conditions and formatting and pull in information from the Power Apps objects themselves. And that's what I'm doing, as you can see. I'm using an if condition, and I'm getting the current occupancy of whichever room I have selected. And I'm seeing if that is less than the max occupancy, meaning is there still room for people to enter? If so, I want to display this block of HTML. I'm just surrounding everything in a div with a green border so that I know that that's safe to enter. I'm pulling in an image from the web of a check mark. I have some text that says safe to enter. And then you'll see right here, I am pulling in the current occupancy and the max occupancy numbers of the selected room to display. Now, if it is full, then I wanna show a separate div with a red border, a warning icon, and text that the room is full and you can't enter. The other two controls, you'll see we have two buttons, a check-in and a check-out button. If we take a look at the visible property of these, you'll see that we're hiding the check-in button if the current occupancy is more than the maximum occupancy. That way we can be assured that people don't check in when it's full. And if we take a look at the check-in buttons on select property, you'll notice that we have another if condition and we're checking to see based off of a global variable that I'm setting in another screen, which I'll show in here in a second, if the questions are required, then I want to navigate to a different screen called check-in. If they're not, we're just going to go ahead and update this record directly and increment the current occupancy. So we're doing that with a patch statement and you'll notice that we have the patch statement wrapped in a global variable using the set command. So in the background here to store which room this information is showing for, we're setting that in a global variable called selected room. So when I patch this information to increment the current occupancy, I wanna make sure that I'm updating my global variable so that the value that's shown there in the HTML control we just looked at is updated correctly. So you can just wrap your patch statement in a global variable to do that. So this will store the value or the outcome of this patch. To get the selected item, I'm using the lookup function, passing in my data source, and comparing the ID with this selected global variable's ID. And then I'm just doing some math. I'm getting the current occupancy and appending one. The checkout button is really straightforward. If we look at its on select, we're just doing a patch, that same patch, and updating the selected room variable, but subtracting one from that current occupancy value. If you look at the current occupancy, you'll notice that I'm doing a lookup to get this current item's occupancy information. So I know what it currently was so that I can either add or subtract one to it. The rest of the logic in this app is really all in the settings piece. For this settings button, I'm actually using a component. So if I click on the components tab, you'll see I have a settings menu component. And really all it is is a gallery and we have some component input properties, particularly the one you wanna look at is the one called settings section items. And this is where you'll store what to show in the gallery of settings options. You can put in the label and then the screen that this should navigate to. The two settings included in this app are to manage rooms and to show check-in questions. When you click manage rooms, it takes you to this room settings screen. And all we're doing is surfacing up a gallery of that room occupancy tracking list we have two icons. So this is how we're getting the selected room to start with. When you pin one of these, we're setting the selected room global variable to the current item that you selected. And then we just have a form control so that we can edit one of these existing rooms and then we can also add a new room by clicking the plus button. Now let's take a look at the check-in settings screen. First thing we have is a toggle button control. And on change, we're setting that global variable of questions required to the value of the toggle. If you recall, we were using that in our check-in button on the landing screen to determine if we should navigate when we click the button or just go ahead and update the record. Below that, there's a gallery which visible property is set to only show if that questions required is true. So if we toggle this to yes, then we can see the list of questions. From here, we have the ability to either delete these questions or toggle whether they should be shown or hidden on the check-in questionnaire screen. If we take a look at the toggle control within the gallery, you'll see that we're patching the questions list and we're just updating the active field 
to one or zero based off the toggle value. So if the toggle value is true, then set active to one, otherwise zero. And I'm using a number field in this because when you're wanting to filter SharePoint list in Power Apps, filtering by a SharePoint Boolean field doesn't always work consistently. So you're better off using a number field and just using one for true and zero for false and filtering based off of that. If we take a look at new question, this is just an icon, but when we click it, it displays a form so we can add a new question. One of the cool things that we're doing in this configuration is you can insert a question, choose whether it should be active, and then you choose the question type. So I'm allowing for single line of text or yes, no. We're actually going to use this question type to dynamically set what control to show in the check-in settings screen. So let's just save this and you'll see now that's updated in our list. And we'll go back in, set a selected room there and we'll check in. So this is the check-in screen that the user would see if we have that setting enabled. Now for this screen, all it is is a gallery. But one of the cool things we're doing within this gallery, you'll see that we have the title, which is just the name of the question, but we have both a input text control and a toggle. So what we're doing is with the toggle, if we look at its visible property, we're checking to see what the question type is. So if it's yes, no, then we're showing the toggle if not false. And then we're doing the same thing for the text input control. So if it's single line of text, we show this. If not, we hide it. So this allows us to kind of build a dynamic input form for users to fill out. And the last piece of logic we had in here was within the on check of this toggle. So if it's checked, meaning if the value is marked to true, then we're setting a global variable called questionnaire status to true. So we're using that to block check-in. So if they say yes to any of these questions, then we don't want them to be able to check in. So if we look at our check-in button and go to its display mode property, because you'll notice when we set one of these to yes, the check-in button didn't disappear. It was there, it just was disabled. This is something we can control with the display mode property of our buttons. The display mode of a button, for example, can be set to edit, meaning that it's clickable and usable, or disabled which will show it, but it will be grayed out and not clickable. So we're toggling off of that questionnaire status value and saying if it's true, meaning they set one of these questions to yes, then we want the mode of the button to be disabled. Otherwise, we want it to be edit, meaning we can use the button. That's really all there is to this particular template. If you have any ideas for any other templates you'd like for me to showcase, please drop me a note on Twitter at April Dunham. Hope you found this helpful. If you did, like and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video.